Hey there, the numbers are in for the Panama City Beach real estate market for August 2024. I'm Craig Duran with the Duran Group over at uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. In this video, I just want to go through some of the charts and data that I like to look at, especially when I'm helping a seller position their property to sell. Uh, we'll look at months of inventory and I'll explain that to you a little bit and also just see where prices may be headed in a few different products. So let's start with, um, oh, and finally, at the end, I want to talk to you a little bit about this new rule um, regarding real estate commissions and some of the things I've seen so far and some of the things I think especially sellers can be prepared for that may help you uh, save on some closing costs when it comes time to sell. So that's after the data. Uh, so first of all, let's look at the condo market. Uh, remember, uh, those of you who have seen any of these videos before can probably... Um, <laughs> repeat this word for word, but if you haven't seen this, remember months of inventory, I always put it in quotes, um, is a number we've used for decades in real estate and it helps us understand the pace of the market, how hot or cold something is. Five or six months of inventory has traditionally represented a very neutral market in real estate. Um, this is where you might see slight appreciation over time, um, but the market isn't on fire hot, it's not too terribly cold. Uh, when the number is lower than five or six months, one month, two months of inventory, things are happening faster. That's more of a seller's market. That's where you tend to see price appreciation and just the opposite. When the number is higher, things are slower. There's more supply in the market. There's less demand in the market. And the longer we stay in a slower market, the more pressure there is on pricing to come down. So uh, months of inventory for the entire Gulffront condo market um, has started, you know, back in March of 2023, we were on the tail end of a really hot, hot market um, at 1.43 months of inventory. You can see if you just look at this big picture, we've been steadily slowing down through about April of this year when we slowed down, when the pace really sped up. And April through about July, we were slowing down an, an incredible amount to 15.21 months of inventory. That means theoretically it would take us 15 months to sell out of all the condos that are for sale on the beach. Very sluggish market, very much buyer market. It looks like it improves slightly to, you know, from 15.21 to 14.42. Um, a couple things about that. Um, that's encouraging that we finally got it going in the other direction. We finally stopped this, um, slow down. Um, I wouldn't, I don't want to get too excited about that yet, because again, if you look at this entire chart, we're still, we're still trending slower overall. Um, hopefully this turned and we'll continue to see it creep down. That would be an encouraging thing. But again, at the moment we're hovering at 14.42 months of inventory, which is a long way from five or six months. So if you're selling now, there's, there's still going to be a lot of pressure on pricing. You've really got to get pricing right. All the things, all the fundamentals of real estate matter now. Uh, marketing has got to be great. Really need to package up information about rental income, age of mechanicals, have the units in good condition, all those things. Um, before we go into housing, there's a couple other ways I like to look at this. Remember, this is just the overall market. Um, if you start getting dissecting this a little bit, you can learn some things. So I like to start there, but I'm loading a chart now that will show us what it's like just for buildings that were built before 2005. Um, same type of trend, although those units got slower, 9.96 months of inventory up to 11.83. Subtle things to learn there. Um, last month, the older buildings didn't do as well. Um, that'll be something worth keeping an eye on. Um, if you look at the newer buildings built since 2005, just for comparison, again, I'll take just a second to load. Um, you can see that last month after spiking to a horrendous 35 months of inventory, almost three years, we, we improved dramatically, but again, I don't want to be too excited because we improved to 18 months of inventory. So things did get better in the newer buildings. Uh, we we're still a long way away from five or six months of inventory. The last thing I would do when I'm working with an individual customer thinking about selling 
um, is then we can go in and get really, really specific and we can go to Gulf front units priced at um, a certain uh, price point. We can, we'll, we'll dig even deeper and look in specific buildings or specific sections of the beach, but you get a sense the condo market still um, maybe showing slight improvement overall. Not surprising because June, July, August, those months are so heavily rented. It's hard for us to get in and show units um, that time of year. So maybe we can get a little pickup. We normally do um, pick up between now, you know, Labor Day-ish and through towards the end of the year. Um, we'll just have to wait and see because, again, like we've been talking about, the condo market's facing some hurdles. Cash flow is uh, much different now than it was two years ago with all the structural integrity reserve stuff, all the milestone inspection stuff, all those things. So um, I wouldn't be too excited that prices have, bo have bottomed and are going to start moving the other way yet. Um, the jury's still out. I have seen um, what feels like a bit of a pause on price decreases. Uh, two, three months ago, I saw more of that. Saw some sales happen a little bit lower prices right now at the moment. It feels like across a lot of the buildings, um, we've sort of maybe hovering around the bottom. But again, I don't want to get too excited about that or promise that we're at the bottom. We could just be a pause on some things before we're continuing a slide. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, detached single family market, a lot going on here and a lot of different ways to look at this also. First of all, if you look at just the entire beach, this is a house detached single family house like it sounds. This will include Gulf front homes. This will include um, a smaller, older property, anything in between. Um, in July, we had been improving over a three month period, you know, sort of an extension of the traditional spring market in real estate. Uh, we got down to 5.61 months of inventory, very, very neutral um, market. We slowed a little bit last month from 5.61 to 6.35. Not a huge difference. We're hovering around neutral. So it'll be interesting to see um, how that market continues to move. One of the big drivers, of course, is all this talk about interest rates. Uh, a lot of people are very confident that the interest rate, the Fed funds rate will come down this month, which could be a big one. Uh, of course, mortgage rates could react to that and come down. Anytime interest rates come down, especially in the housing market, um, that could help the market somewhat. So we'll watch that. A couple ways to look at this. Um, I like to do this quite a bit. So there's much more new construction in our market than we've seen in some time. Uh, just off the top of my head, just within neighborhoods, uh, Breakfast Point East still has a lot of new construction. Um, there's a new neighborhood, there are three new neighborhoods up Highway 79. Ward Creek is selling very well. Breakwater at Ward Creek it just started accepting contracts in the last week or two. There's a lot of interest there. In fact, um, Jacob and our, my office is purchasing out there. Melissa's thinking about it. Um, I'm working with a customer who's already contracted out there and someone else who may be buying too. So a lot of interest in that community. Um, salt grass at Ward Creek will be coming out a little bit later this year. Um, and more new construction across the beach. So one thing I like to do looking at the market um, especially when I'm working with someone who's selling something that's used, a resale. Um, builders are doing tremendous, a tremendous job at marketing. They always have. It's a little bit of a shell game with closing costs saying, hey, buyer, we'll give you X amount of dollars towards closing costs, but they're also putting some closing costs onto the buyer's side that sometimes sellers will normally pay. However, um, they're also doing some very smart things about throwing in some upgrades, buying down interest rates, all the things that are important for buyers, builders market this very well. And of course, everybody likes new. So if you're thinking about selling a resale, you're competing with all those things, but you also have to look at the market a little different. So we can look at, let's say um, something like, uh, let's see here, something like a house in maybe Breakfast Point that was, but I want to be a re I want to, I don't want to compare new construction. So I want to look at something built before 2020 price between 500,000 and 800,000. I get a different set of numbers. That market 
is a little bit slower. Uh, actually, it's about the same as the overall market. So um, good news there. Another way to do it is anything that's 750,000 or more within a half a mile of the Gulf. Um, curious, I haven't even looked at this chart yet, so I'm just curious to see what this will show. Um, a little bit slower, right? It's slowed from 6.8 to now 18 months of inventory. So if you're working on pricing, thinking about marketing something like that, your pricing strategy would be very different. Uh, it's a much more sluggish market. Another one, uh, if we're looking at the Gulf front market, just detached single family first. Um, this one's a very interesting chart to look at as soon as it loads. So from December of 2023 running up to July, you see this big blank space here. There isn't a line because we didn't have any sales. We only had one sale in March, which that data point picked up that we would be at, at about 12 months of inventory. In July, we picked up some more sales, spiking us up to 20 months of inventory. We started to improve again, sort of mirroring the Gulf front condo market. We're down to 10 months of inventory. Um, I think I remember seeing three closed sales for detached single family in the last 30, 45 days. Um, much more active Gulf front detached market than we've seen in the previous six months or so. Um, very, very encouraging for that market. Another way to look at housing is there are also, uh, pardon me, uh, there are also plenty of attached units across the beach. And so if we look at what I organize as ASF, um, attached single family. So again, we could look at the entire beach, which would mean anything that's in, that is an attached unit. Um, if you own something like that, uh, very generally speaking, the market was getting better, very much like the overall housing market, 5.16 months of inventory, slowed to almost eight months of inventory in August. Um, slight buyer market there. Um, if you're waterfront, if you have an attached single family unit, but you're waterfront, let's see if that shows us much different. Uh, things have been slowing down since April sort of mirroring the Gulf front condo market, but then it improved again, very much like the condo market back to 8.3 months of inventory. So very similar to that other attached number. So a couple of things I hope you learn from that. Um, first of all, the more specific you can get, the more helpful it is for your individual property. One thing I do, um, if you're already in the database, you should be receiving these, but I, I'm happy to run uh, a very uh, back of the napkin analysis, back of the envelope, whatever they say, um, for you just with minimal information. If you want me to just reach out, I'm happy to do that. Um, if you live in, uh, there's about 14 or 15 communities and condo projects I focus on specifically um, that we give you very detailed updates on a regular basis, uh, once a quarter detailed analysis. Um, so you can see what's happening in those neighborhoods in your community. If you were just changing software for this, uh, so I know a lot of you are waiting on me to get you back into the system. Bear with me. Um, I lost my father a couple of weeks ago, and so I'm behind on a, a lot of things. But getting getting everybody into that e-alert system so you can keep track of the properties you want to. If you aren't receiving those e-alerts, um, let me know. The best way to let me know that, uh, shoot me a text to 850-290-0417. And let me know what you'd like to follow. Um, you can follow a specific neighborhood. You could follow, keep up with one condo project. You could keep up with multiple neighborhoods and multiple condo projects. You could keep up with a certain price range. You could, I could set you up so that you're only following only two bedroom condos, only three bedroom homes. However you want to slice it, um, I've got the ability so that you can watch that market just like I do. Um, and happy to set you up and do that again. Bear with me. This it's this this is a very manual uh, thing of moving everyone that's already in the system, which is you know twenty plus years of that over to another system. So uh, it'll take a minute. Um, last thing I wanted you to understand, or at least to talk about, we you may or may not have heard of this new commission rule in, that we in real estate have to follow. Um, I want to talk about it. Um, Let's talk about it from both perspectives for just a second. Uh, we'll start with buyers and then sellers. I've got some tips 
that I, I hope helps some save some people some money. Buyers, um, be prepared now. And this is new for us in our area. A lot of other parts of the country have already been doing this for years. So if you've bought real estate in other parts of the country, this may not be new to you at all. Um, but uh, be prepared that an agent, a good real estate professional will be asking you before they show you anything um, to sign some type of represent representation agreement. There are two types you can probably sign. You can either sign some kind of a representation agreement or a simple showing agreement. Um, and there are different versions of all these. Um, there is nothing standard about this. Different companies have different forms. Different agents have created their own forms. Most agents will be using the forms that the Florida Association of Realtors have put together, the attorneys have put together. Um, so you'll, if you start to buy multiple things, uh, they'll start to be familiar. But just know that the form itself, there are multiple versions of the form. All of this is completely negotiable. You, an agent will probably be explain or should be explaining to you what their services are, what they're going to help you with through the buying process and what they're going to charge. And they're also going to talk about who pays that fee. Are they expecting you to pay that? Are they working in a case so that the seller or the seller's real estate agent will be paying that. That's all something that be prepared that an agent should be talking about with you from the very beginning. Um, it's been very common for agents not to talk about this in the last few decades of doing business. Sellers, um, I think there's some extreme opportunity here for you. Um, first of all, this is brand new. There is not a standardized way yet that agents in this area are doing business at this point. Um, in my experience, I'm working on about 30, representing 30 sellers at the moment. Um, most sellers are choosing to keep things essentially the same by authorizing me to offer part of my compensation, what I'm being paid out to a buyer's real estate agent. Um, this is how it always has been done. I agree on a fee with a seller or we, we negotiate and agree on a fee. And part of that fee is offered to the buyer's real estate agent paid from our brokerage to them. It's how it's always been done or been done most of the ways in the past. Again, most sellers are still choosing to operate that way. Some sellers are wanting to follow the new rules and still want to offer a buyer's agent a fee, but it's a reduced fee. So instead of say two and a half or 3%, to a buyer's agent, they're offering one. Uh, the idea with a couple sellers that are doing that is, hey, we're following the new rules, we're up for sale. Buyer's agent, you talk to the buyer and work out your fee. We'll still pay you a percentage point for bringing someone, but really this is the idea behind this settlement. Um, I have a few buyers, or excuse me, I have a few sellers that have negotiated a fee with me and established what I'm charging for marketing and all the other services. And they're offering zero to the buyer's broker. Again, theoretically, the buyer's broker, the buyer's real estate agent should be working with the buyer on what they will be, what that buyer will be paying that agent. Um, most of the time we're doing this, uh, or the sellers I've seen that are choosing to make this decision have properties that are in excellent condition or very, very desirable or anticipating that they will be in high demand. For example, um, I'm representing a one bedroom unit in Calypso that is probably the best cash flow condo I've seen in a couple of years. Um, asking price 539, documented, documented rental income of almost $60,000. Last three years, two years ago, over $60,000. Um, impressive unit. That seller has decided, hey, um, and their new floors, it's in excellent condition, the mechanicals are new. So the seller is very confident in what he has to offer and is assuming that buyers will be very interested in this, which I tend to agree. Um, also am representing one of the, um, what used to be one of the model homes in Breakfast Point. It's a gorgeous home, excellent condition, 
loaded with upgrades, as you can imagine, in a model. Um, a pool, great location, good neighborhood. Sellers are uh, have the same mindset. I've got something extremely desirable. Uh, buyer, you know, come make us an offer. And if you want to work with a real estate agent, call your real estate agent and work out that fee for those services with them. Uh, because the last point I would make on this, um, because the fee for a buyer may be very different depending on what's required. Think about it. I've gotten plenty of times, I've gotten a phone call where a buyer calls me and says, hey, Craig, there's really this one house I want to see, or there's this one condo I've got my eye on. Can you show me that one? And then I've had buyers that come into town and say, hey, Craig, we hear that Panama City Beach is a good place to invest or is a good place to live or is a good place to own a second home. Can you educate me about the area? What do I need to know about what's coming? What do I need to know about school districts? What do I need to know about different condo complexes? And there's a lot more education on even deciding what type of home or condo we're going to end up trying to view. And then seeing two, three, five, sometimes 20, 25 properties before getting into a negotiation and going from there. So you can see how the work may be very different and may, um, a, a different rate may make sense. So that's the last thing on compensation. But again, for sellers, especially, I think there's opportunity here, depending on what it is that you're selling. We don't have an established way of really doing business yet. Um, so think about that. Um, sorry, I've said last thing twice now. Last thing, last thing. Um, just for example, I've seen sellers receive an offer with the buyer's agent including in the offer what asking for a fee. I've seen some agents before they present the offer call me and say, hey, Craig, are they offering compensation and signing an agreement beforehand? And I've seen some agents just making the offer without checking to see if there's compensation or not. And that has everything to do with what that buyer's agent is doing with that buyer and what agreement they have in place. So this is very new territory for us. Um, Make sure if you're selling, you're asking uh, the agents you're interviewing to talk this through with you because I think they're options. Um, both sides, buyers, sellers, uh, just know this is all negotiable and know we're entering new territory and um, we're all still learning to see or waiting to see um, if there's anything here that will hurt or help our customer. Uh, so keep that in mind. Again, if you have questions on this also and like to just hop on a call to discuss it, even if you're not buying or selling anything anytime soon, I'm always happy to chat about real estate and help people where I can. Again, uh, direct cell number 850-290-0417. Give me a call. Shoot me a text. Uh, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you again next month. Thanks for watching.